Good morning, everyone. Pastor Leif here. Today, we're talking about the sixth statement. It is finished. But what exactly was completed on the cross? What purpose did Jesus' suffering and death serve? What did it accomplish? So, in John's gospel, Jesus' death is an atoning sacrifice to save us from sin. A superstitionary sacrifice to save us from death. In other words, he took my place. He took your place. Yes, the wages of sin is death. So he paid the price. So we don't need to die because he died in our place. It was a demonstration of divine love for humanity. A model Christians are meant to look to in practicing sacrificial love. A compelling portrait of Jesus intended to steer the hearts of thousands more to come and follow him. Again, it goes back to not being a fan, but a follower. Doing what he did, loving how he did, offering mercy, offering grace, because we have receded. So it was a compelling portrait of Jesus. Intended to steer the hearts of thousands. And we know there's thousands of people worldwide. A sign of God's ultimate triumph over death. Think about this. A dramatic reversal of events of Eden following the disobedience of Adam and Eve. So that's why when he says it is finished... I mean, it points to that Jesus is our Redeemer. He is our Savior. He is our High Priest. He is our Pascal and Anointed Lamb. He is our Liberator. And the King who is willing to die for His people. Through His death, He reveals our sinfulness, the costliness of grace, and the magnitude of God's mercy. On the cross, He shows us what love looks like. So in his death, he identifies with our pain, suffering, and human mortality. And in his resurrection, he proves that he has overcome each of these things. Jesus was doing all of this on the cross to redeem, to save, to draw humanity to himself. This was the it that was finished at Jesus shouted in his death. Now, let me read it to you, John 3.16. Scripture that most of us, if you go to church since early age, most likely you know that by heart. So the Word of God says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes in him, he should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever, anybody, but that confession, believing in the heart, confessing with your mouth for salvation. So then it says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now watch this. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. And does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So it was a shout of victory. It is finished. It is paid for. It is canceled. You can come into the throne room of grace with boldness now, because... Jesus paid it all. You can come to him with that expectation like he loves me. 
And I mean, the least we can do is loving Him back by the way we live. Loving one another. Showing grace. Showing mercy. Even in moments like we feel like we're being crucified. Moments where we feel like, why am I going through all this? You choose to love. You choose to serve. You choose to look just like he looked to his mom. And he took care of her. And he, you know, he commanded, John, take care of, your, of her as your mother. It's not easy. Because when we're going through some kind of pain, when we're being crucified, when we feel like our flesh is being crucified, we want to fight. We want to struggle. We want to, no, this is not going to happen. You know, but I'm sure that if you're listening to this, it's because you want him. Because the Word of God says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. So we, we won't have glory if it is not through him. If it is not allowing Jesus his love, His compassion, His mercy, His grace to fall through us. So the day will come when we will say, it is finished. You know, and, and what are you going to, what is going to be your legacy? What are you going to be remembered by? You know, it would be great if your kids would say, man, he loved the Lord. He was a man of prayer. She was a woman of faith. He really was a true Christian. Yes, he had his ups and downs, but his heart, it was like we see the transformation. We see God work through his life, through her life. It would be a great day. So, Father, I pray today that we all would look at those words, It is finished. And that we would not take for granted all the sacrifice, everything. We know that grace is free, but someone had to pay for, and Jesus did just that. So I pray that you would encourage us today through this word, that we would live for you, that people would see Jesus in us, and they would glorify you. In Jesus' name, I pray and I bless my brothers and sisters this day. Amen? Have a great day. Pastor Leif, bye now.